Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for Tuesday, December the 29th. Today is the day the church commemorates the life of King David. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Proclaim his salvation from day to day. Give to the Lord the glory and strength. Give him the honor due his name. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old, things that we have heard and known, that our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children, but tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might, and the wonders that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers to teach to their children, that the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and arise and tell them to their children, so that they should set their hope in God, and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Our Old Testament reading today is from Isaiah chapter 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, hear that your soul may live. And I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, that he may have compassion on him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, and it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall break forth into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall make a name for the Lord an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Our writing this morning is from Pius Parsh. Pius Parsh was a Roman Catholic priest during the late 19th and early 20th centuries in Moravia, which is now the Czech Republic. And it's from a book he wrote called The Church's Year of Grace. God became man that man might become God. This truth, cast in parallel phrases, summarized the Christmas mystery to the Christians of old. It impinged itself deeply in their spirituality. In almost identical words, the truth occurs frequently in the Fathers and in ancient liturgical texts. God assumed a human nature to affect man's participation in the divine nature. God became a child that we might become children of God. The birthday of Christ inaugurates our divine birth. With Christ, we were born God's children. God became man. This truth is utterly incomprehensible to our puny human minds, that the eternal God, whom heaven and earth cannot contain, who bears the world in his hand as a nutshell, before whom a thousand years are as one day, that this eternal, omnipotent God should become man. 
Would it not have proved his loving mercy had he appeared for a mere moment in the splendor of his majesty, amid thunder and lightning as once on Sinai? No. Such would have shown far too little of his love and kindness. He wanted to be like us, to become a child of man, a poor child of poorest people. He wished to be born in a cave in a strange land in hostile surroundings. Cold wind, hard straw, dumb animals. These were there to greet him. The scene fills with amazement. What can we do other than fall down in, in silence and adore? God put on the beggar's garb, became a tiny crying babe in order to offer man his divinity. In paradise, a fallen angel had promised, eat of this fruit and you will be like God. Man ate and became a prisoner of hell. On Christmas night, another angel, the church, stands before man, offers him a food and says, eat of this and you will be like God. For the divine food, the flesh of the incarnate Son of God, makes us partakers of the divine nature. And about David. <clears throat> David, the greatest of Israel's kings, ruled from about 1010 to 970 BC. The events of his life are found in 1 Samuel 16 through 1 Kings 2 and in 1 Chronicles chapters 10 to 29. David was also gifted musically. He was skilled in playing the lyre and the author of no fewer than 73 psalms, including the beloved Psalm 23. His public and private character displayed a mixture of good, for example, his defeat of the giant Goliath, 1 Samuel 17, and evil, as in his adultery with Uriah's wife, followed by his murder of Uriah, 2 Samuel 11. David's greatness lay in his fierce loyalty to God as Israel's military and political leader, coupled with his willingness to acknowledge his sins and to ask for God's forgiveness, 2 Samuel 12, Psalm 51. It was under David's leadership that the people of Israel were united into a single nation with Jerusalem as its capital city. We join in the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we praise your fathomless mercy with which you take pity on sinful men. All the prophets and apostles preach this to us in your holy word. Let our hope not be put to shame when we pray to you for all who suffer at this time. For behold, the evil foe has become mighty, and the great ones of this world rule often with unrighteousness. O God, who in former times caused your saints to overcome injustice, strengthen also today all who stand in need of your help. Grant that all prisoners of war, held as slaves and sacrifices of earthly wrath, may return to their home. Stand by all refugees and homeless people and be their justice. Be a father to the widows and orphans with your strong protection. Go through bars and fences to those who are imprisoned for the sake of your name. Strengthen them for a good witness, and let them not waver in the confession of your name. Teach us through their example and the example of so many holy martyrs to be ever watchful of the confession of your son's name. Let us not be put to shame when the evil foe lays his hand on us. But if it is your will that we be persecuted for confessing Jesus as our Lord and only Savior, then support us in your grace, that we may withstand all trials, and grant us peaceful rest. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God of majesty, whom saints and angels delight to worship in heaven, we give you thanks for David, who through the Psalter 
gave your people hymns to sing with joy in our worship on earth, so that we may glimpse your beauty. Bring us to the fulfillment of the hope of perfection that will be ours as we stand before your unveiled glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Have a blessed day.